Hey YouTubers and uh, welcome to a uh, little short intro to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I might turn this into a playthrough, um, but um, for the moment uh, there's so much uh, to this game that uh, just the initial setup and configuration probably warrants its own sort of separate video here. So that's what this is all about. Now Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead can actually be got. Yeah, bring up Notepad here. And I'll stick some of these links down in the description for this. But um, the uh, Cataclysm is a free game, completely free, just like Dwarf Fortress, and uh, can be gotten from this well, cataclysmeda.org. Now, a lot of people, a lot of these links, you can probably just search Google for. Most people tend to use this one here. The Cataclysm DDA is, is the main name for whenever you're looking for any programs and stuff. That's probably the main thing to sort of search for probably um, now there's two ways of running this like I say this is a very old game like Dwarven Fortress but it does have a tiles mode so I'd, I thought I'd uh, have this link in it here where where you can basically get the actual tiles for it I'd probably recommend doing that as like a, a last resort because the most preferred way of getting and downloading and, and managing the in, your install of Cataclysm it's basically to download the CCDA launcher here. Um, like I say, there's multiple re releases. I'm just using the 1.3.16 uh, launcher, and it'll make your initial setup and configuration of Cataclysm so much easier. So, uh, definitely get that. And, uh, let's go and have a look at that. Unfortunately, I am running it at the moment, but a lot of things are greyed out while the game is running. Anyway, let's just quit that. So basically, um, once you uh, run the launcher for the first time, you, you're going to press update game and it's going to do a load of patches. Now, there's these these releases, this is a very, very active game. Uh, these releases come out all the time. Um, so, I mean, literally, like that, there was that one was like six hours ago. Now, for me, they've added um, other stuff. I mean, basically, you can sort of get a bit of a summary here of what's going on. And like I say, you can. The really handy thing of this launcher is you can just pick and choose what version you want. And then basically when you hit update, it'll download to your whatever folder you specified. And uh, you go from there. Obviously, this was downloaded a day ago. But, uh, that's it. Um, so if you wanted to update you know, the game to a different version, if you see something important that fix loads of bugs or something, but um, like I say, people are adding new features to this constantly. One of the recent new features um, they've added, um, apart from the extra uh, grilled sweet bed uh, recipes and stuff, uh, they've basically added like a new butchering system to the game quite recently. It's still a little bit buggy. Uh, they're also about to change um, another way uh, awful sort of works as well. So you might want to pick and choose what version you're running here. Um, so at the moment here, you can see we're running uh, eight. Two, three, six is is pretty stable, and already you know, well that was a day ago. Already there's been quite a few builds, even since I got that. Really, I'm actually tempted to go back even further than that. Like I say, I don't know. Anyway, your mileage may vary. See how you go. But um, one of the most important things is uh, <laughs> the sound effects. The the basic sounds in this game are awful. So if you go over here and you just hit install. I strongly recommend installing this RF RRFS sound pack, uh, which is really good. So we'll have to enable that in game in a minute. Um, there is a ton of mods for this game. I am not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to quickly scroll down here, and hopefully you can just rewind and pause the game and, uh, and see what you like and, and what you don't like. What I what I will say is that I've uh, disabled a few of these things. Example, this uh, beta National Guard camp, like I say, I'd probably keep it, but the fact that it says beta means it's probably testing. Um, so I've removed that. There's a few other things. The gluten free recipes, I just don't see the point. I mean, you could create like a gluten intolerant character, in which case, you know, enable that and stuff. Um, I've disabled fast zombies. <laughs> I do like to live. Um, Double zombie speed, although it's not that bad. I mean, you 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 can sort of 
outpace or at least match pace with a few zombies just by walking. So that means just you have to just run a lot more. Um, filthy clothing, oh, I just don't like. It's such a hassle, and basically, late game it just becomes irrelevant anyway. So it just makes the sort of the early game more challenging, really. Um, I've disabled generic guns. Um, basically, it's quite good. Um, I did have a bit of a bug with some of when you launch the game. I don't know if it creates an actual bug or not, but with the AK-47 clips apparently had some error with it. So. I've just disabled it but what it basically means is if you find any ammo it's going to be for that specific gun usually which gets a bit of a pain so for example Glock 17 ammo is different just like in real life you know uh, say like a just a Colt revolver you know nine millimeter ammo and stuff like that so it is going to make sort of later game a bit more challenging by having that disabled because it means I mean, it's just sorry it's disabled by, by default but uh, uh, but anyway, it just means, yeah, so finding ammo is just going to be a bit more of a chore. Um, I did add a few mods. Uh, I've also disabled more buildings and locations as well. I think there's plenty and enough in there. Necromancy, this is like your own ability to raise the dead. Um, just I just think all this sci-fi stuff is a bit naff. Uh, like I say, I did also disable the mythological recipes just to go with that and stuff. Um, there are some things that you might want to do initially. Um, fungal monsters are a real pain, and it's very much um, a zero and a one mentality. Either you've got the equipment, such as long range flamethrowers and stuff, to deal with the infestation, or you haven't. Um, it can make it a bit awkward if you start near one, they have a huge area of effect where the fungal monsters can spread out and basically they convert the land to. The fungal, um, so it, it can be quite devastating, really, unless you know how to deal with it. I'd probably, because I, if it's going to be your first play, place, I'd probably disable that. But um, other than that, everything else is probably right. You know, you might, may or may not want fictional guns. I don't know. Um, I did add now. What did I add? We turned off tough zombies, so this is doubling zombie health. But, I mean, this is this is just a mod list. You can add and remove mod once you're in the game as well, and there's quite a list of, it, of extra mods you can download and get in addition to all of those. Um, you know, you might want some more guns, even more. You know, somebody's might modified it. The problem with these is that some of these mods are quite old and won't work with the latest version, so you do have to be a little bit careful. Maybe do some testing. But um, anyway, I've rabbited on enough about this, so you could. You could probably spend the whole episode on, on just talking about mods and everything. So let's uh, let's just run the game. Like I say, it's going to be eight two three six, so it is slightly older. But there we go. Um, it will. I've just run this. It's slightly longer. It processes a bit. Um, one of the first things you want to do is basically create a new world. Now, what's interesting about this is these are the sort of the mods that are available, and these are the ones that are actually in the game. Um, so I would recommend basically a few of these so keep uh, keep disabled NPC needs that way you any NPCs you get so you might you can have followers and stuff um, and that'll disable their need for food and stuff I mean I think they'll still need healing things like that so, but I find the AI is just really rubbish they don't feed themselves properly as well um, I'd probably recommend this and I'm gonna do it right now and that is disabled filthy clothing the reason for that is once again it's only a hindrance at the start of the game you know by the end set up all your washing stuff you know you can it's irrelevant anyway so i just don't see the point um you may or may not want to keep simplified nutrition i like to leave it in um i mean once again it's just affecting the early game you've got to go out and find like yummy bear vitamins and other vitamins and you basically got to eat a balanced diet really i i just just don't see the point because later on it just becomes a super hassle you know why <clears throat> I don't know anyway so I just don't bother with that really you know it, for me it's got very limited appeal so simplify nutrition all the way for me now what I do like um, some generic guns before I leave that off um, I might add craftable guns why not let's stick that on there um, 
makeshift items I think we'll have. Um, I probably will have medieval, there's a few sort of um, antique shops and stuff you can find around. And medieval weapons can be kind of handy sometimes. I don't know if we want more survival tools, well, we'll have to add them. I don't really want these uh, mythological replicas, so Thor's hammer and whatnot, I don't know. I don't really want dinosaurs. Um, modular turrets. Um, I think this might even let you build them, there you go, which can reclaim from broken robots. I'm going to leave that off. Okay. Um, salvage robots, so you can rebuild damaged ones, I'm going to leave that off as well. Um, I've just, oh, one of the mods I added was this mining mod, so I'm going to add that in. Turns it into Minecraft, but anyway, who cares? Um, it basically lets uh, underground, uh, sort of what it says there, adds mineral veins randomly found underground, which could be awkward and not be interesting. I'm going to do that. Um, I don't really want um, NPCs mutating, so we'll leave that off. Um, neither do I really want them having, like, traits. I mean, I suppose you could have like somebody with glasses or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to add this more locations one. Um, tall buildings aren't that great. I don't know. Up to you. I might have added that. I can't remember. Um, I don't need any more buildings. I do want boats. I do want folding parts. Um, I do want tanks, and I do want additional vehicles as well. That's really cool. This really spices up the whole sort of terrain, really. Um, and we're not going to worry about those. So, um, just press tab, it'll go along the top here. It's backwards, by the way. We're going down to world options. So, I'm going to leave these two initially. I do actually bump it up. Maybe we should just five. Just go for five. <laughs> um, um, we leave the spawn writing now. They recently added that uh, decaying food, uh, rotting it says there, can spawn random monsters. These are really trivial monsters. Um, they're probably not really worth doing. I'm going to set that down to forty. Oops, leave that forty. Um, and basically, they're like, yeah, like I say, like cockroaches, you get these little uh, radiated animals. They run away from you, I don't know. Maybe they like infest larger areas. I don't know. So, yeah, so we'll turn that down a little bit. I don't care about that. Item spawning, uh, spawn scaling, we're going to leave as one. So, we've got a normal amount of items in the world. Um, same with NPCs. Uh, no. There will be static NPCs. Let's give that option. Maybe it's down or whatever. So we'll leave that. We'll leave their speed and stuff. Um, now season length. How many days do you want in a season? Now, this is quite important. I did leave it on default before, but I'm I'm definitely gonna adjust this now because 91 days is just absolutely ridiculous. Basically. In winter, when there's no food around, 91 days is a very, very long time to survive without without food. In spring, you can like harvest bushes, but you're still going to have a lot of your stuff freezing temporarily, which can be helpful. But like I say, food can turn mushy when it freezes. So you do have to be a bit careful. So I'm going to go for, I don't know, just much more reasonable 20 days. It means we're going to cycle through the years a bit more. Um, um, and, that, and that is going to affect your zombie spawn rate because they uh, they up they upgrade like over time. So it it will sort of make the game a little bit harder. So you could turn that down to compensate a bit, really. Um, we're going to start eight o'clock in the morning. It's going to be spring. So you can change these around. Uh, we'll leave it on spring. Spring is kind of handy. You do find a lot of eggs in springtime that sort of help you out under bushes and stuff. Um, whereas they, for some reason, they seem to disappear in summer. But we'll see. I mean, that was in a previous version, so we'll see. And obviously, you could live eternal spring, summer, or whatever you want to do. Um, the only another thing about um, seasons, it's actually quite handy in some ways to start in a colder environment. 
is you can wear more clothes. More clothes equals more armor. So, <laughs> you know, that will help. Um, so, I, I don't know. Tempted to start in summer because I've got a, a, a interesting start coming up. But anyway, we'll start in spring. Um, wandering spawns, I recommend having that off. But, I don't know, it just adds a bit more spice to life. Um, what happens there is, is you've got like uh, big zombie hordes that wander around the map, but uh, they're attracted to noise. So if if an if another zombie say triggers like a, a car alarm or something, that's going to spawn a nearby zombie horde. Um, so you know you're going to have a lot more to fight really. Um, what it means without that though is that um, so this being forces that we can. We can clear up the town and basically clear away the monsters. I mean, you still get the odd one or two wandering monsters that you've got to be careful of. So it's not completely safe, but it just means it's a bit more safe. Uh, it's a bit more newbie friendly, so we're going to leave that. Classic zombies now. I want the full big nasty zombies out there, so we'll do that. I don't really want to start surrounded by zombies. Um, I do want static NPCs, so I'm going to turn that on. Unfortunately, that means that there's going to be one starting near us. Um, but he's gonna gonna meet his end sooner than, than I'd uh, I'd like, unfortunately. But anyway, um, that's interesting. It, scenario based. Maybe it will change where he starts. Um, we'll we'll come back to that anyway. Um, mutations we want and all these other stuff. What I normally do is a line up and downstairs. Um, it, yeah. I don't know, a bit of a mixed bag. I'm 50-50 I'm on this, actually. In fact, I might leave it off for now. But um, in, in things like uh, labs, where you have multiple and prisons and all sorts of military bunkers and stuff like that, where you have multiple Z levels, lining the stairs means it's just easier way to, to find your way through the place, if you like. So it, it just means here you go up a stair on the left-hand side of the screen and appear on the stair on the right-hand side of the screen. But the benefit that um, labs sometimes have a lot of staircases on one level, so it might be difficult for it to auto sort of match what stair you've gone up and down. So we might have some map glitching, so I might actually leave that. Anyway, and uh, character pulls off. Right, give it a name. It's calling this place Lime Springs. Tab finished, and we'll say yes to that. So that's created our world called Lime Springs. Right, now we're going to come over here to a new game where we're going to, I'm going to load in my preset character, which is basically a short sighted, quick person. And um, it's going to load up all those mods and everything else that we told it to. Over here, and um, to the beginning when you're creating a new character. So normally you can choose what. You want you know a single pool of stuff or multiple. And what that the pools of abilities are basically um, come over to stats here. So you stat. If you look at the top here, we've got five, five, and zero. Um, so you can basically you can bump up stats. So you can do this. Notice points left on the left. Going to like, there's two now left. So you can have a maximum number of points. So we now we we're over. We're on minus. So we couldn't actually have. Um, more points than that. So basically, it's setting up your, sort of your maximum um, stats, if you like. Now I have bumped up intelligence. It's like traits, so you can have a maximum number. Of... But um, so I'm I'm sticking with multiple. You may want a single pool if you wanted to do a really interesting build or whatever. I don't know. Um, now, what it, I would like. So I'd like to start um, in a burning building, <laughs> but um, I've already chosen my character, so I'm not sure if this is going to let me change this. It has, and what you see here is now, look, we've got an extra 10 points to spend, because we're about to lose our starting building. Um, I'd really like to, uh, it was in here, I'd actually like to... Uh, there's one start where you can you can start in the shower basically. So you got you start off with a bar of soap um, and a towel, and that's it. 
which is a very interesting start indeed and I would actually like to do that but um, maybe maybe burning buildings close to that yeah. anyway who knows well, whatever so profession I've gone with survivor but it could be um, all sorts of things and these oh here we go shower victim there it is so this is going to pre if you look on the right hand side over here it's going to pre-set up a bunch of uh, bunch of traits for you now I'm survivor here so I've, you, know, you start with you know socks clothes whatever you know she's got a winter scarf as well uh, at least I hope it's a woman wearing a bra <laughs> but you know I think you know so we'll, we'll may or may not change that in a second um, but I mean I have got 10 points to spend now so I don't know I mean that would give me even more points so like I say you know you start well, I thought lumberjack would have started with some professional traits like chopping tree chopping or something but anyway this guy's got addictions and stuff so there's a variety of sort of starting things that are quite interesting Fast food cook, you get cooking bonus. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start as a shower victim. I think that's uh, it's very funny. So we look, we once again we've earned another point, so we're actually got eleven points now. So what I might do now is is got all my traits anyway. So oh well, we'll uh, we'll go and set them all up again quickly here. So what I like to do, night vision. Pretty handy. Just lets you see one extra square at night. It <laughs> gives you a little bit of an edge. Um, I like quick. Quick gives you a bonus to like just generally doing everything. Everything you do in this game takes up time. Um, even uh, so, every time you you click to move or click to do an action, it's going to use up time points, and that gives the everything around you effectively moves while these time time points are being spent. Um, so that's quite good. And there's another one. There's a parkour. I want as well. And that basically lets you jump over fences and gates and stuff a bit quicker. So it just gives you that just little bit of nimble edge you need to basically get around. So let's try that now. I don't know if we need to take in six minus seven. Yeah, so here we go. So if you look when I chose parkour expert, that, that number there turned red, so it means we're gonna have to choose a bad trait to counteract that. Um one of the easy traits I like is, is short sightedness. Um mainly because I am in real life, but also um you can actually it's one of the ones you can fix you know, near, one of the ones you can fix later anyway, you can get bion bionic implants. Um, poor heal is another good one to take if you wanted to. Um, that's uh, actually it looks like we are going to have because it's minus, so I might have to. But anyway, um, but basically, so this is balancing. Um, you know your good abilities versus your bad abilities. Um, poor healing isn't too bad. It basically means you're going to heal a bit less overnight, but I found it to be more than enough anyway, really. Um, yeah, still at minus one there. Uh, let me leave that and uh, yeah, let's reset my stats. So we'll go for nine intelligence again. We actually go for that. Um, what I really want to do is, is stick one in skills. Now, I usually start with archery, but um, through a recent playthrough I did earlier. <laughs> Longer term, I'm now thinking that electronics might be a better bet. It's not really that useful a skill early on, unlike archery, um, but it does make quite a bit of difference. So what I might do, we'll do archery one. Okay, well archery two then, um, and we'll go for electronics. I'd like to do more. Okay, electronics three, that really help. It's one of the harder skills to learn, unfortunately. And it really helps with um, building vehicles and, and whatnot. A lot of the other skills we can and, and we will train them up as we go, really. Um, 
could actually get. I'm, a, I'm actually going to waste some points here, but here we go. Anyway, I don't. Okay. Tab. And yes, we'll get that. Uh, yes, we are finished. So, so here we are in our building, and uh, you can see a fire right there. So, you can see there as I toggle over it, it says the wall is smashable. Now, if you press X to look around, well, there's all sorts of keys here. Um, probably the easiest thing to do initially is to press escape. Then you can go down to your actions menu here, and uh, you can do various things. So I was going to press X there to look, but if you go into the look menu, you can see you can peek around corners, you can view the map. And these actually show you the, the hotkeys for that various thing. Semicolon there is look around. Um, or you can go back to the main menu. So I've not really used semicolon much, so let's try it. Oh wow, it's doing exactly the same as the X key I was about to press. But anyway, so so you can see there you get a little bit of a cursor. So this dude here, Diamond Dem <laughs> Dempsey, she's about to buy it as this whole building falls down. And there's a glass pipe over there, <laughs> which tells me that um, this is a junkie's house. So I've <laughs> I've started in the fire as a, as a junkie, but anyway, whatever. Um, we can try talking to her actually. It's E to examine, and then her, and uh, basically we can. We, if we, if she was a follower, we can go and repair her with stuff, sort her inventory out. But she's not, so she won't let us do that. Um, so let's. Uh, I mean, I'm neutral. I've not started ugly, so she might might give us something. No matter he wants to uh, kill her. she's she's not going to live long enough to for us uh, to complete this quest so i'm not going to do it oh well what a shame i was hoping uh, some of these npcs you can ask for equipment early on <laughs> so that might help anyway this um this fire is going to soon burn down this whole building so the first thing we're going to do is walk there now i have dropped my i made this mistake the last time i did this and that is because you don't have any pockets. I'm just wearing a sheet, by the way. Um, if I go into inventory, you can see all I'm wearing is currently a wet towel. I have actually got some glasses, which is handy. Um, so, uh, you don't start with much, but basically, you know, you could pick up your, your soap bar over here. And uh, that would put us overweight. But that's not a huge issue because basically um, you can wield it. But um, more importantly, I've just noticed as we move east, so there is, is something here in this um, little chest of drawers here. That's a pair of leather pants. So instantly put those on. And we, when you pick something up, if you look at the top there, it's gone red because we have no inventory space. This weighs 2.50. Um, so we're going to... I didn't change the default system, by the way. It's in pounds. Um, and I probably wouldn't recommend it, actually. I mean, you might want to change... The temperature to, to Celsius. In fact, I can do it under options here actually. So let's do that. Um, so Celsius, I'm a, I'm a Celsius person unfortunately, but as far as the weight goes, it's probably not worth doing that. Um, oh, here we go. And actually, something else you want to do is this sound pack. So if we do that, RFF sounds is now going to be on. I'm going to turn the music way down right off the bat just in case. It can be a bit loud. But I, I think it only actually starts when you restart the game, so just be aware of that. Um, I'd probably actually turn on auto saving every every 50 turns. This is uh, quite handy. I should have probably talked about this. Started doing stuff, but anyway, uh, well doing, well worth doing. Um, these auto features can be a bit life threatening if you're out in the jung jungle and you start sort of pulping or whatever butchering a corpse up automatically and an enemy who was hidden suddenly comes into view sees you and then charges to attack you and basically you die before you finish the task right. use with caution I, I recommend manual pul pulping and, and manual butchering um, and in actual fact I've forgotten to turn on turn off all uh, the, the game starts whereby when you kill a zombie you have to like pulp its body otherwise it will respawn after a while. I usually turn that off. So, 
auto pulp might help with that, but depends once again what you're doing. The auto pickup, on the other hand, is uh, extremely handy. Um, I would recommend it. Um, by default, it has um, safe mode, so as long as you're in safe mode, which basically means you can't see a zombie, <laughs> you can toggle it on and off. But uh, as long as safe mode is on, it's going to pick stuff up. So if we save that, if you look, if you press And if you look up in the right over here, um, you can see in what that'll do is if you see a zombie, so if we open this over here, zombies outside, but uh, there might be. So we're just peeking through the curtains at the moment. Um, as soon as we go. But, um, as soon as you spot a zombie, basically the game will freeze and say, you know, hey, I've spotted a zombie, what do you want to do? Um, do that in a second. Um, but uh, first, let's put these trousers on. Now, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, over this. Um, so I'm pressing E to basically examine. Wait, look, if I press the right arrow, you can use the number pad and I recommend it for you moving diagonally. Um, and then basically you can use left and right arrows to select and unselect and if there was more things we'd be able to scroll up and down um, there's multiple ways of managing inventory but this is one of the easiest for putting stuff on and off um, I will show you the other one as well you can on the number pad you press at the top there's a forward slash key that'll go into this screen here and it looks a bit daunting but what it does is it lets you manage your inventory in multiple ways so I can select my inventory, I can select what I'm wearing now on the left panel um, and you can see and then basically if I press the tab key it alternates between them so if I tab over to the right hand window and press 6 to see what's the right of me or more importantly you probably want to leave it on A for a while which lets you see all so if you look here we can now see the soap bar that's to my west and the leather pants that are to my east and basically we can manipulate everything immediately in the area around us. Now if I had changed this to a, di a direction like 4, what we can do is that then I could like pressing the enter key is going to move that item to the other location. Um, so it's a way of like moving items around quite quickly as well. It's quite handy. Um, press E it'll bring up a description of that. I can't really wear that to mark to open up the help on the window here. Um, quite a lot of options. Um, the M for moving stacks is kind of handy sometimes, but for the most part you don't really need a lot of it. Um, toggling V to whatever vehicle you're currently grabbing um, is also quite a handy sort of thing. Later on we'll get like a cart, we'll pull around and uh, that's extra free inventory space. But anyway, in the meantime, we're going to press E, arrow right, and we're going to pick up these leather pants and we're going to wear them. So now if you look at my inventory, we're still wearing a towel, um, and we've got that. I'm going to grab my bar of soap, because I don't want to leave it. And if you look now, the inventory screen has changed on the left side here. It's got just general stuff, so in your pockets and whatnot, and then it's showing you items over here. And if you just, just hit the enter key on any item, it'll bring up its description of what it's got. And another handy thing about most trousers is they have some pockets. Um, so this will actually be able to store 0 0.5, which is absolutely nothing. But at least it's something I might be able to stick my bar of soap in there or something. Um, one thing that this inventory screen won't tell you um, is basically how heavy things are. So you've got to press return to view it and you can see how much volume it takes up, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but, and, and this is where the other screen here if I press I to see what's in my inventory, you can see over on the right hand side we can see how much weight that thing is carrying, uh, the weight that thing weighs, and how much volume it takes up in your inventory. And obviously at the top here we can see we've got 0.25 of 0.5. So in actual fact, because I was wearing the pants, it hasn't wielded this, it's just stuffed it in one of my pockets. So hopefully it's nice and dry and we won't get mangy pockets. Joke, it is. Anyway, um, I really want a weapon 
and um, this uh, this floor dresser here is um, about to get it. So I'm going to press S to smash it, and we're going to start wailing on this thing. Now this is making noise, and as you can see, we've got a zombie over here that's breaking through that window. So we're going to have to start running in a second. Let's see if we can smash down this thing here. The fire is spreading. So, oh well, just smash this window. Now, this normally it'll dump stuff nearby you, but in this situation it's chucked all the stuff outside. If I press the X key and we go and have a look, there's a sheet attached on. There's a sheet and some other items there. The other item is a piece of string, which is also very handy. So I might just now step over there. I went to step down and right, but basically look over here it's saying we spotted a zombie and this is where the get exclamation mark thing so because we're in safe mode now I can't move or do anything that will use action points until I basically resolve this. We can still check our inventory, see what's you know what you know things you know, the values of things and stuff like that. But if I try to like wear or wield um things, throw them, those use action points. So time is gonna pass and it won't let time pass. So what I'm gonna we could just press the single quote button, just ignore that particular monster. Say if there was just one of them, then you might want to do that. But um, ignore all monsters. Basically, if you look, we got over here on our screen, there we got, um, to explain this, we got a little mini map of the immediate area. You can see we're in a house here with this blue square here. Another house nearby, and there's a white house. I don't know what that is to our south, but anyway, we'll look. But anyway, then we got um, these are like health bars because we haven't got um, a trait that lets us know all about ourselves. We've just got like general health bars, so the game doesn't really know exactly how much health we've got. But I mean, if you look here, it's green, which means we're pretty healthy, and we've got actually the maximum number of bars. Over here in this bit, you normally get things like uh, your statuses, so whether you're hungry, whether you're, um, you know, hyped up on caffeine, poison, whatever, the statuses appear there. Um, this is our happiness bar, as you can see, it's just average happiness at the moment, and then obviously we've got our stats here. Then just under that, we've got focus, which is basically a sort of, I don't know, almost like a mental state. Um, Kind of thing. It basically means it's it's a bit like concentration effect. Now, then our speed. That so this is effective. Um, basically, our general actions will only will basically <clears throat> will use. I think this is percentage because I think by default it starts at a hundred. We're actually slightly faster, so we're actually a hundred and ten. So we because we're ten percent faster. We've got the quickness perk. Anyway. Um, I can't remember what zero W means at the moment, it'll come to me. Um, then you've got your stamina bar here as well, and you'll see this go down in a second because we're about to start running. But I might try and actually run through that door and, and we'll explore the rest of the house before this whole house burns down. This fire is spreading very rapidly. I imagine it will catch up, set all these wooden floor tiles light and uh, possibly burn that guy down. So I'm particularly worried about him, I'm, I'm, and I don't really care much for glass pipes. Uh, the only concern I've got here is this fire is going to spread to the outset of this building and it's going to set this ground alight here and if you look the next building is almost right on top of us so it's probably going to burn down that building as well. Now from the mini-map that's another house. Houses are green. These V's show their direction so this V the left means that the entrance for the house is basically towards that side and in a general rule that house building entrances are normally facing whatever road because there's a road here for this house entrance. The houses can be rotating. It's quite an interesting tile set, but um, I'm sure you'll see later. Anyway, we're then uh, underneath here. It shows us the description. So we're in a house. We're not in a wine bar or cellar or military camp or whatever. That'll all change. Uh, what the weather's like, it's currently clear, which is handy. Um, it can be raining, snowing, whatever, all sorts. Um, we don't have any dry clothing at the moment, so getting uh, 
chill from from uh, the snowstorms and stuff is it, going to be a big issue for us. But at the moment, the weather's clear, so I'm grateful. Uh, current moon face, moon face and stuff. Lighting effects. Um, what uh, what you can do if you look over here, this guy here is actually stood in darkness. So if we were stood here, first of all, that guy wouldn't be able to see us. But secondly, I mean, might not be able to see us anyway because if you look this way. So it depends how the light's coming in, but we might. Oh no, I mean, we're in a bright area, so basically he can see us. But if we were in a dark area, this particular zombie just has normal human eyes, so he can't can't basically see in the dark. So if we were in the darkness, he wouldn't be able to see us. Basically, turning off safe mode. I'm gonna step into the window, and I'm gonna examine that way, and uh, I'm gonna grab a couple of things here. Um, heavy stick we could use as a weapon. In fact, that's not too bad. It's doing 14 bash damage. Um, but I'm, I'm, at the moment, I'm really interested in these sheets because we can make like a, a little sling pack. In fact, with the long, with the heavy stick, uh, we can probably make something else. I cancel that menu, uh, which is quite extensive. Um, it's, uh, tab through some of these and see if I can actually build anything. Here we go. Under armor, you can already build. Now this is based on your skill, so I haven't got any skills at all. But this is all skill zero stuff. So we can make a makeshift sling, make shift sling if I can talk. And if you look over on the right hand side, this is a large sheet tied into a crude over the shoulder sling. So basically, you're creating like a little storage area. And if you look, can actually store seven point five liters, so actually it's like a little, it's like a little bag we can just sling over our shoulder. Now it's encumbrance of forty, which is very encumbering. But at the moment, we don't have um, any any inventory space. Um, down here, I'm seeing that it's only going to take forty eight seconds to actually build this. Now that's not going to be enough for that guy to run across the room. So I think I'm going to be able to do that. Also, as well, if you look, it says dark craftable. So if, if we were stood in the dark, this particular thing you could make. Not all the things you can. Let's go have a look at here. So this rag tunic says that we can't. That's going to use one sheet. It's going to take six minutes. It'll definitely reach us in that time. I think we're going to get the key flare, I think. Okay. So this is a headdress. So this is basically going <laughs> to... It's like a, a neck, some sort of neck scarf then. Um, it's going to go around your mouth. But it gives you some warmth. There we go, value of 30. Uh, gives you a good amount of coverage. Um, so while we hear about coverage, I might as well talk briefly about that as well. Um, basically, whenever you wear a piece of armor or clothing, um, it's going to cover a certain amount of your body. So, for example, a bikini or like a g-string or whatever is like going to have no amount of coverage at all. What that means is um, somebody's going to hit you. So, for example, this this cleaf also provides two bashing and two cutting protection. But um, if if they hit you outside of that piece of equipment, then it's not going to provide you any benefit. So, eighty-five percent is actually pretty good. That's going to cover most of you, in this case, your mouth. Um, so if somebody's about to hit you in the mouth, there's a pretty good chance that this piece of, you know, equipment's going to get in the way and basically lower the amount of, you know, damage you take slightly. Um, it's also, this particular thing is also going to provide you some acid protection, not all of it does, and more importantly, environmental protection. And that's things like smoke, which there's about to be quite a lot of in here. Um, so I'm also going to have to be careful. Um, but um, other things like acid clouds and uh, fungal blooms, but there's no way this this would protect you. That environmental too will definitely not be enough environmental protection to protect you from fungal clouds. So don't even think about it. <laughs> um, fungal clouds are very poisonous. Um, I say fungal people in general are very nasty, really. You want to stay away from it. Um, but anyway, so I think I'm going to make this makeshift sling because it's only 48 seconds. Let's see how fast. So this zombie's now on the window frame. 
it's actually taken him a fair amount of stuff, a fair amount of movement to walk up onto there. Unlike us, we've got parkour, so we hopped up onto this, no problem. Enemies are going to be slightly slower at like traversing like difficult terrain like this. So we'll actually uh, actually be faster than him over here. Anyway, back to the building and we'll build this um, make shift sling. Here we go. I heard a crash. I don't care. Now I see a zombie approaching. I don't care. So we've made it. <clears throat> and uh, we dropped it on the... I don't have any inventory space, so we dropped it on the floor. If you look, the fire is uh, definitely spreading now, so I want to press G or whatever to get... Did it drop it? Oh, I want to press... It's a wearable. Shift W. Uh, and we want to wear uh, burnt makeshift sling. Now, we are very close to the fire, which is what's going on here. Start running, and we're going to run past that guy. He did manage to get a hit in us there. Uh, hopefully he's taken some damage from that fire. I think even we'll be take oh, he's attacking that NPC. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, while we're here, I'm just going to jump on this. Yeah, they're wailing on each other now. Okay. I'm going to grab um, I'm going to grab those two. Oh, can't even carry those. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not going to. I'm going to arrow left and. Carry those. We're going to take that along. Come in handy. Tying things together is pretty important. Anyway, it looks like there's more than one fire in this place. What we got there? Cardboard box of cereal. I'm taking it. Now, other stuff only appears when you get near it. Wow, there is nothing in any of these fridges here. Something on the cupboard on the end. That's a plastic bottle of coffee syrup. Sounds interesting. It's frozen solid. But I'm going to take that as well, so we're going to whoops, spam my keys. So don't forget to have the little plus next to it, pick it up. Uh, anything in, well, that's the bathroom. There's the remains of our bath. I'm glad we didn't start in the bathroom. Um, let's get out of here. I'm running. I'm going to slow to a walk. Now, if you look here, because that guy hit us, we've taken a little piece of damage. And... Uh, notice that there's like a, a damage sort of system in this game all items have it yeah stuff's gone out yeah I burnt so a slightly burnt sling actually didn't take any damage I'm quite surprised at that but um, if you look it's at full health it armor and stuff only gets two bars but um, you obviously get the full five but uh, if you look up here at your stamina bar that's going down as well and stamina is quite important because it you can only sprint and run away from stuff while you're while you've got stamina. Basically, that's why we're turning off walk at the moment. Movement is uh, plays a very important part. Obviously, the faster you're sprinting, you know maybe if I'd have just walked up here and walked over there and then walked back again, you know this fire would have encompassed this whole sort of section here. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm thinking that we're hearing something over here on the left. Over here on the bottom left, and I, I'm, I have a feeling that this might be it. Oh, yeah, it's a crash. Look, we crash from over there. Um, and I have a feeling that might be fire, so that part of the building might be on fire. At the moment, our only exit from the building is that window down there. I really want to check out these cupboards here, so we're going to just um, risk our life here and, and go down here. Oh, that's okay. There's a window just here. There's a door there, so we might be able to open that. Yeah, and that's going outside. So there's something, there's something outside. So I'm guessing, as this is part of a road, if you look, if you look here. So this says um, sidewalk over here. Oh. Why is it moving? Curse when I'm anyway, whatever. So if you look there, that says sidewalk. This bit here is pavement and road over here. I don't know what in that pavement that's actually a road and this is the road markings up the middle the roads going this way but anyway so because this noise is coming from a road i think there's a, a old trashed car about about here so uh, we'll go and check it out in a minute oh, we just saw all that big explosions and stuff going on over there um let's um open that window 
Now what I will do is I'll use to peek the direction. We're going to peek out the window. Now the advantage of peeking is obviously won't be able to see you. And while you're peeking, you're sort of like slightly looking around the corner sort of thing. So they, they don't see you. And we can see a lot of monsters over here. You can see there that that spitter zombie there is having a, a wailing of a time in that car. They're all smashing it. Um, because they've made some noise, it's now attracting all these other zombies. So these these are normal zombies here. And we could we can't at the moment because I haven't really got a weapon. I might go and get that stick. We'll sort of go around here if it's not burnt or out, which it might have done already. But um, we we might be able to like kill one or one or two or three, maybe four if we're lucky. So just normal zombies. But these other zombies are quite tough. That spitter zombie is especially nasty. Not because he's really hard, but basically because he's a spitter, he basically spews um, acid. And he, it has like a sort of, almost like a cone effect. So it'll spew in an area towards you. And uh, that'll give you like flesh burns and stuff. It's quite a nasty attack. But the most dangerous zombie that I can see right here, right now, is this zombie soldier. Um, there, it's a normal soldier, so it's a zombie wearing a soldier's armor and helmet and stuff. So he's going to be really hard. He's he's a very very dangerous um, enemy to face at the moment. So we're definitely not going to be able to kill him. And because, like I say, because all these zombies here are grouped up together, I, I wouldn't even fancy our chances. You know, we might get one or two of them. So we're gonna we're gonna leave them here. Um, we're gonna put one more south, so we are gonna check out so that bottom cupboard is empty as well. So it's time to go. So we're gonna jump out the window. Um and what we're gonna do, if you look now, these zombies every time I move, they move. So if I move down one more, see them? These are all stuck in the car, they're smashing their way sort of southeast towards us at the moment. Yeah, that uh that zombie guy just literally just smashing his way right through that windshield of the car at the moment. So we're going to duck around this corner here. And as soon as I take another step, you notice now we're in darkness. So we've broken line of sight. And that's important. All these zombies will still come to where I am now. But if there was like another window here, we could like quickly jump into this building and they wouldn't be able to know where we were. As long as we could do it quickly enough. At the moment, I'm not really particularly bothered. <laughs> because this, the nearest doors over there when definitely I don't think we'd make that so I'm gonna run down here uh, yeah okay well we're gonna run down here and I've just seen another zombie this is a screamer zombie or a shrieker zombie he's uh he's like uh, old ladies they like scream um it's um I'm trying to think of the old film where uh, they shriek when they get near you but basically, she's a shrieker, so if she, as soon as she gets within five or six squares of you, she's going to let it out on a mighty yell, which will obviously be a loud noise that will attract other zombies. She's going to attract other zombies. Um, I can actually see some other dots here. This is like a mini-map view down here. Now that we're outside, we can see stuff in our immediate vicinity. We can see something in yellow and, and red over there flashing. So, go and have a look at those. Okay, so we've got another regular zombie, and uh, unfortunately we have a spitter zombie. So we are definitely not going this way now. <clears throat> the reason why I'm coming this way is to try and get behind these buildings. Um, a, a lot of the zombies tend to hold, hang out sort of on the front. See a bit more of the terrain now that we've actually been over here. But uh, another new feature is you do forget this over time. Zoom out. Z to zoom in. If we zoom right out, you get a much better overview of what's going on here. And uh, so, so I expect more zombies to be up and down here, and they'll be smashing these. Hopefully, now that these guys can't see us, they're still making noise up here. Look, crash there, and we had probably a crash there as well. So these zombies might actually head back to the noise. Now that they've lost sort of sight on us over here. Um, 
I think I think our best line of escape is going to be that way. I mean, I could try and run past them. I've actually got a, quite a reasonable chance of getting past them. Um, but a um, bit of a shame. So, but uh, this this burning building here is going to make all the crashes and all the stuff. So a lot of the zombies are actually going to be attracted to this building here more than we are. So I mean, all these zombies whacking this are probably trying to get into this loud noise here. This will be very loud noise. They'll be hit. They'll be able to hear this from miles away. If I press M, you can bring up an even bigger map. So we've we actually I I think the only reason why we know as much as we do is because maybe we live here. <laughs> Uh, but normally your vision is a little bit less than this until you find some other things like binoculars and stuff. But anyway, so you can see here we've got the flashing at ampersand line showing where we are. We can move around so we can see there's a house to our right. There's, you can say that's probably going to burn down. Down and right of that we've got a dojo. So there's there's a fair chance there'll be some like I don't know. Got, some sort of martial weapons or something in there. I think that's worth us checking out. Might have some tomfas and stuff. Like I say, it is a dojo. Um, but uh, or they might also have a, like a book on, I don't know, karate or whatever. There's there's numerous sort of fighting stances. We don't have any fighting stances at the moment, but you can read those books and learn, you know, Aikido and karate and Bushido and, or, you know, the, I can't remember the first, but a tremendous amount. Um, we've got a, a garage over there, um, very handy. It's across the road, so it's not going to burn down from our building. In fact, I think all the other, the other buildings immediately next to us are just going to be these top here. So Diamond Dempsey, that, that NPC is basically probably burning to death in that building as we speak. They're too stupid to run. Um, but anyway. Unfortunately, if our speech craft had been higher, we could have convinced her to come with us and be like a companion and stuff, but anyway, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Um, she, but at the moment, she gave us a quest to go and do something. Uh, I think it was to kill uh, somebody who like killed her family or turned them into zombies or something. Um, we don't, we'd have had to have done that before we could get her as a, as a, a friend. Uh, and obviously the building's long burnt down by the time we come back, so bother with that. Um, so interesting things in this town, like I say, we've got a garage, uh, very, very important. You can find very rare items like acetylene torches, uh, welding equipment, very, very useful stuff in that. Definitely worth uh, checking out later on. Um, there's There's a dollar store. That might actually be worth us going into. Obviously, it's going to be cheap and cheerful stuff, but they might have, you know, just a cheap T-shirt, whatever. Um, who knows? I mean, we'll go and check out this house to our south in a minute, but that's uh, that's another good place to go for equipment. Who knows? We might even get super lucky and have, like, a little shopping trolley in there. Which will... Shopping trolleys can basically... You can just push or pull along, and uh, they obviously increase our carry weight rather a lot. They can't jump through windows like we can though, unfortunately. <laughs> so fairly, you know, we've got to leave them behind if you want to go and check out some building. But potentially very, very interesting. Um, looks like we've got a bank or something on oh, no, another dollar store. Um, wow, well, another dollar store. I mean, usually they, these are banks. Wow, this is a uh, cheap one. Maybe this is the bank here. Yeah, here we go. There's a bank here. Blimey, there's two banks in town. So this is, um, that's potentially another good place to come back to. Unfortunately, at the moment, you need a stethoscope to break into the bank vault. So we need to raid some medical hospital, doctor's surgery. So we get that. Now, what else we got? There's a small warehouse. Um, general stuff, they have crates. So we need a, a little crowbar to, to open those. Crowbars, quite easy to make a basic one there. Um, a pizza parlor, so we can probably get some food and stuff in there. There's another warehouse, there's a police station. That will be alarmed, so we want to be careful when we're going around there. Um, they might even have bars on the window, so you need a hacksaw to get through. If we can get in through the front door and stuff. Then we got a couple more residentials, 
hardware store and a bunch more houses which is there a homeless camp okay on the outskirts of town and uh, um, initially um, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking for a place to sort of call our home and uh, that and the building just up and left of us so these are the two most sort of promising places so that one there might be good I mean there's a T which I think farm or something. oh yeah it's a trail I don't think there's any buildings though so we we opened to the elements tried and uh, rested there I mean there might be a log cabin I don't know but um, it depends on the tile set and random generation really but um, that's some of the interesting stuff in this house in this town um, like I say I think um, what I might do is uh, call it there currently been recording for just over an hour so trim this up uh, maybe we can cut some stuff and cut it down to maybe half an hour but um, I'm going to press escape and I'm going to quick save the game sorry I'm going to save the game and quit and uh, go back to the main menu and resume that another time if people are interested anyway I shall leave you there and um, see you next time